let me into my zone. Please don't let me into my zone. Let me into my zone. Let me let me into my zone. Let me into my zone. Please don't let. Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Kiddo Cave. A little bit of a uh, late morning over here from Helsinki, Finland, drinking three fucking cups of coffee in the early morning hours, dropping the kids off at the pool, and now ready to do some analysis. Anyways, uh, Bitcoin doing a lot of very important things over this past weekend, confirming uh, not just a very, very powerful weekly close, but also filling the gap almost in the exact same hour as we spoke about from yesterday, so I want to follow up on that. Um, on top of that, I will be back on Twitch later today, unless if something drastically terrible happens. I do apologize about it yesterday, but uh, Elsa, one of Elsa's friends over right now, and so I wanted to take the time to hang out with her. So today is going to be perhaps even a little bit of a longer streaming day. Anyways, um, what else do I want to say? Uh, oh yeah, the link to that description of this video, of course. And the Crown Trading application is now live and 100% uh, free. So head on over to app.crowntrading.net and take advantage of it. It's like a community gift, you know, from 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 us to you, which you're pretty much part of so it's from us to us <laughs> anyways uh speaking of let's actually go check it out right now I would like to wish you the best of the best and the haps of the haps as well. Just start your week off because, well, why the fuck not? And uh, checking it out right on over here. Oh, sorry. Let me just switch the scene. There we go. There she is, baby. I want to put, again, a special, um, a special well, interest in the open interest. No pun intended. As it's, uh, as well, it did shave a little bit off, about 50 million off the top of it. Uh, that's really not significant in any way, shape, or form. And we are still, more importantly, above that critical $1 billion marker, which to me says that the big move is yet to come. And that's going to, again, tie into the analysis and we're actually going to show a lot of things that suggest that this big that this next big move is probably coming this week last week it would that you know we were kind of still waiting for a few of the um a few of our indicators kind of cool off and down i think that we're probably uh set up for a move either later this week or early next week is what things are lining up with so we'll talk about that that today but this is the big bad focus as we've been saying bitcoin dominance pretty steady uh 63 and a half percent i don't really i haven't really seen it fluctuate too much in the last few days from that region and uh, total market cap going over, going up over the last 10 days or so, about 10, almost 11%, which we'll actually look at a little bit later as well as a total market cap chart, agreeing with a lot of the other things that we're saying is going to add validity to the overall analysis. Anyways, getting to the, uh, getting the actual uh, charts themselves, looking at Bitcoin weekly, this is the big news um, that, you know, that I've been waiting for, essentially. Bitcoin closed a new, on a new weekly high, taking out that last major spike from uh, late October. And to me, this confirms a reversal to the upside. We now have a higher high. We have completed an actual the we have we've actually completed a uh, you know a reversal now at some point in time bitcoin will come back down and set in a higher low somewhere presumably so everyone's going to be holding their breath but for now uh direction is up as far as the higher time frames go and of course going back to the genesis of bitcoin anytime that bitcoin's had a reversal those are your major massive moves both to the upside and the downside and just as simple as that you know calling you know calling downside from 16 all the way to uh, 16,000 all the way to 3100 uh, going, you know, calling the upside all the way from 4,000 to 14,000, and more recently from 10.3 uh, down to 6.5 uh, territory. And, you know, you can go through all of the past prior examples before that. But that is why that is very, 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 very significant. And guess what? We've already retested this area as far as CMEs go. Now, Bitcoin did get that wick down to about 9,700 region, as we spoke about coming into the open of CMEs, a little bit after the open of CMEs. Uh, last night, well, last night for me, maybe it was uh, maybe it was like middle of the day for uh, for those of you in the Western Hemisphere over there. Um, but overall, uh, Bitcoin getting a very very powerful reaction off it. Now I'm going to go down to the lower time, or actually, should I go down to the lower time frames just yet? Let's actually stay a little bit on here. Uh, while we are here on the weekly, I do want to put special interest on once again the historical volatility percentile on the weekly time frame. It is incredibly fucking low. Now it has been contracting for quite some time, ever since quite literally the high at twenty thousand bucks in uh, December 2017. And you can kind of re run a regression down down below here and this would give insight into like the super macro uh cycle into what we're kind of looking for and that's still yet to be resolved for like another very long time probably like october maybe december uh of this uh you know of this year so that's still way far and away but that speaks towards the greater formation as a whole we're talking about a range between like you know tw i mean realistically like the highs of 20,000, 16,000 right in, right in over here and uh in the lows of uh well the last cycle is Essentially. So we can expect a break from that, you know, probably around that time. So still another year to go for, for, for some major massive face melting price action as far as what like a lot of the moon boys or doom boys are looking for. But I just want to show that that's not necessarily what we're looking at in this uh, current trajectory. However, going down to a daily, we should note, we should take particular note that uh, this has been collapsing ever since, or sorry, the 12 actually gets a little bit better. This has been collapsing and consolidating and contracting ever since uh, Bitcoin put in the current low at about 30 or sorry, not 3,100, but uh, 
uh, the 6500 low right around here. And guess what? This is coming to an apex relatively soon. This is where I'm getting this information from and lining up with the open interest. And it would suggest that we probably get a break outside of this major range as far as the more preliminary time frames go. Uh, maybe as soon as Friday and somewhere between like the end of this week and beginning of next week is where it's kind of lined up with. So I would expect that open interest um, that we that we kind of opened up this talk with, uh, again, no pun intended, um, to likely have that earth shattering move around that time, which is likely going to break the range either above 10.5, which is where I'm kind of uh, where, you know, where I think, uh, I mean, I'm just generally bullish here. Or if we were to have a reversal back onto the downside, it would be, it would, it would bring us back down below about 9,600. So somewhere out Outside of that range, it's likely where we are going to find ourselves in the next uh, week, week and a half of price action, and uh, the next like the next seven day or the next like five or so days is going to be very telling and to see how Bitcoin uh, constructively consolidates within this region. But thus far, I really like what I see. More importantly, going over here to CMEs, look at this. I mean, this is just beautiful. The gap fill is absolutely wiped the fuck out over here. You do see that anyone who was buying the gap fill had to hold on to a about a five hundred dollar loss after that. Bitcoin on CMEs went all the way from about ninety nine hundred where the gap was all the way down to 9500 right here not only that but it did kind of complete and fill out the uh the uh, the bearish divergence that was forming so that's already played out if you were looking for that it's not, it wasn't really playable to begin with because it just happened so damn fast um but more importantly we do see that uh that that rsi on cmes is operating very constructively within this region right here sorry let me uh let me adjust a little bit more something like this which you can see a consolidation in the formation of an ascending triangle alongside the bullish control zone so that does set in my bullish bias here here, and I would be overall looking for the RSI to just splurt up. This <laughs> is just a nice little splurty splurt action up into the uh, edge of the more critical zone for the for the bullish control territory. Of course, same thing here as what we've been looking on spot, but I think that this one's just a little bit more obvious. It's by no mistake that you've seen Bitcoin daily RSI be rejected from the bullish control zone ever since June of 2019, right? And ever since then, all these spikes to the upside rejected around the bullish control zone. Those were all these failed rally attempts. So that was quite literally calling the high. 14,000, the high right here at 12,000, the high right here at like 10.3. Um, then the high right here at about nine five, and then more recently down around. Uh, sorry, more more recently on this on this rally to the upside. But having this constructive consolidation uh, uh, within this region as Bitcoin not only confirms a change of behavior just by getting into a new zone in the RSI, but also confirming a and printing a bullish uh, consolidation, a bullish reaccumulation formation essentially at the top of this area is very very constructive and does kind of set in that that bullish bias for myself. Now we're going to compare this to the expected moves chart uh, a little bit later in this. Uh, video but keep that in mind and i do still kind of lean to the upside here as long as we're doing something like that and from the cme perspective i am bullish as long as we are especially below, above about 9700 9700 is that critical territory for myself not just on cmes um also on spot as well spot maybe like 9600 i suppose but overall as long as bitcoin's above there i don't care how many times it comes back down and tests it i i think it probably does come back down and test maybe around like 98 99 very very likely although we're kind of already there already um but as as long as it's not break i look at that as constructive consolidation at a high level while all major uh all all, all you know all major momentum also is kind of resetting and uh and getting ready for the next move which i do postulate based upon um historical volatility percentile and also open interest is going to happen probably sometime around the end of this week starting beginning of next week that's that's essentially where I'm at right now. Um, of course, all major moving averages on all higher time frames are bullish right now. Bitcoin hanging out well above them. And we actually spoke about this in the um, in the program discord earlier today. And I want to briefly touch on this subject right now, especially for the people who are in the program discord, because, um, you know, if you missed it or if, or maybe we it, maybe it's just easier to kind of talk about it on video. But uh, what I was sorry, let me get rid of the uh, 200 simple here as well. I'm just looking at two major moving averages here. This is what strength looks like when you see price action starting to come down or like at each and every time it tests the next relevant major moving average here like you see first it's the 21 then the 10 it gets stronger and stronger on those next tests it doesn't let you get down as far before price action is bought back up that's showing that the bots and algos are turning on their buy program alongside of course the golden crosses that we identified about like a couple weeks ago now so we're just seeing that slowly but surely transpire and this is why it's such a big deal to me not because it's immediately 
immediately going to shove the, the girthy green dildo back to fucking 20,000, 30,000, 100,000, like some very uh, interesting um, analysts out there are saying. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, constructive price action is what you want on this asset. Um, you don't want these like blow off top, just face melting, melting rallies, because that's just going to lead to another pump and dump. Well, this goes up, must come down, as a great old Newton said, or I, I think that's who, whatever the fuck his name was. You know what? Doesn't even matter, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, no, I'd like to give credit where credit is due, but this is the golden credit process talking about right here. And you see more and more divergence away from each other on these two major movement averages. So ver verifying the cross essentially as price action lives above uh, and onwards of, of all major movement averages here. That is strength. That is good. That is nice. That is lovely. And uh, from spot perspective, I am not bearish for the medium or higher time frames or even macro time frames here as long as we are closing, especially daily totals above about 9,600. Even a 12 hour would probably do it around there, although I wouldn't use anything less than that because we are talking about a macro area, but I'm generally bullish as long as we're above 9,600. If 9,600 does get broken, I would look for a move back down to the mid eights and then probably continuation down to like seven, five actually longer term, but that's not really what's happening right now. And uh, we don't even have bearish divergence forming on the daily, funnily enough, even with this current price action, looking at daily RSI, we're making new highs with price action. And in fact, daily uh, RSI for uh, spot price action is kind of already completed this um or, or that proverbial uh what's it called uh ascending triangle that we were looking at um that's present on cmes anyways i would i would look for cmes to fully complete that and more importantly cme also just have been getting the price action a lot better and what do we see here we see daily stokes exact uh, acting exactly how you'd expect during a strong uh during a strong rally and i'm very much familiar with this sort of signature in traditional land this is what you want to see to get stuck into this region this is not overbought there's no such fucking thing as overbought for the goddamn last goddamn fucking time Jesus Christ, crypto Twitter and crypto YouTube, you motherfuckers. Uh, no, just kidding. Of course, everyone's entitled to their own beliefs, but um, that is, uh, you know, that's, that's, that, well, that's mine. Anyways, uh, what I trust a lot more is, is something like RSI to give me, uh, to, you know, to give me reads into, into kind of like how extended we are in this. And this is completely fine, completely constructive and very, very nice read over here. I really, really like that one actually. So, um, you know, again, understand that uh, uh, indicators are going to take on new interpretations depending to, dependent upon the market cycle that we're in, essentially. And uh, if you're in the TA program, there actually is a dedicated video on that topic, interpreting indicators in dynamic mar uh, markets, which is going to directly talk about how they, you know, kind of take on different uh, different meanings depending upon what sort of cycle that we're in. And this would be a good example of one. Anyways, um, I am curious how the lower time frame oscillators are doing over here. We do see that four hours coming down on CM is and actually, funnily enough, during strong trending moves, whether it be the upside or the downside, it's actually the lower time frames, like the hourly, funnily enough, that will get these uh, ebbs and flows a lot better um, for like calling, you know, local highs on the lower time frames and local lows on the lower time frames. So four hours coming down, three hours actually popping back up, two hours probably going to be popping back up as well, and hourly is going to be down. So we are kind of floundering around here. When I see all those guys disagreeing with each other, what it tells me is that we're likely to play out a range for a little bit of time between about 9,700 and. Uh, in 10 to 10 3 region the same area that we spoke about for the last um for the last well, week or so or sorry the last few days not the last week or so because we just got into this region but my point is, is that as long as bitcoin is within this region that is considered constructive and completely fine can come back down here and test 9700 have no major issues with that um can come back up here and test this region a few more times as well i don't really think that it's ready to break just yet but i do think that uh, as long as it stays within this region that is nice that is powerful and that is uh that's essentially what bitcoin blue laws want here um, going over here to spot price action, I didn't really cover up the last days of price action. I, <laughs> I, I, I always feel a little bit, um, uh, what's it called? I feel a little bit like self-aggrandizing when I say stuff like this, but because it's not my intention to come off as arrogant or anything like that. Um, you know, it's just to, just to kind of show my own trading activity, which is sometimes right, sometimes wrong. And in this case, you know, did we come... Did we come back down and fill the gap immediately? Yes. So, you know, that's what we that's what I was looking for yesterday coming into uh, CME's open. Just kind of follow up on that. Yes, we got that. And now, you know, the as far as lower time frames go, I'm more or less, you know, leaning bullish, but just 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 looking for a range to be established here. Again, between about 97 on the low side and about 10.2 to 10.3 to the upside. And uh, and you know, I'm 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 essentially going to be a buyer and support seller and resistance until that stops working. And of course, it's not financial. Advice. I'm not a advisor. Um, 
but the the problem with this is or sorry it's not really a problem but uh the delicate point with this is is that um sorry let me just get rid of a couple of these things because i don't really need them right now they're kind of getting in the way of the uh in the way of the visuals i'm a very visual person um but uh, but my point is, is that uh this this blue box territory right here is is important of course and i would say that i still have like a bullish bias as long as we're kind of above it but uh but this one's the big one for the macro right here this is the 95 50 to 9600 ish level so while this one you know on a lower time frame break would very very likely lead towards a test down here another couple hundred bucks or sorry 300 bucks lower which is certainly very tradable at this price point um this one's the one that matters for the macro so as long as we're above there i'm not bearish and i do think that even if bitcoin did switch around to being if Bitcoin even did switch around to being bearish, it'd probably still take another two weeks anyways. I'd want to see this next weekly like close somewhere around here and then turn back down. But uh, so that's still a little bit well and far away. So I do feel comfortable having a little bit of a bullish bias and well, not necessarily a little bit of a bullish bias, but an overall bullish bias and then waiting for price to just kind of, you know, flounder its way around here, frustrate a lot of people looking for the next big move and then probably move in about, you know, five days to, to 10 days, something like that. Anyways, um, let's see this. This video might actually be a little bit on the shorter side. Let's go check check out how these ranges align with the expected moves chart and um let's see okay so this is this is on a daily right here the first end deviation to the upside is showing 10 2 fucking perfect i got our top side resistance right there where's the bottom side of the first end deviation coming in here? fucking perfect again 97 50 ish region quite literally getting these nailing these blue boxes to the fucking t which is exactly what i want to see so it's less than a 32 percent chance that bitcoin actually moves outside of this range in the next 24 hours worth of trading period so the probabilities again are on its consolidation within this region which i i do i do consider very constructive um you know it looks to me like we're probably going to come back down and test this blue box here and then probably going to test this one to the upside again over here and that's really all that it needs to be as bitcoin kind of stairs up this way upwards and onwards i'm curious though what the 12 hour does say the 12 hour showing actually a more aggressive range funnily enough um but but or sorry actually not uh, not not as an aggressive range but uh but but pretty damn similar actually the daily in this case i do think is getting things a little bit better i am curious how cme range is is agreeing with this or not funnily enough cme um the cme uh rings here are are certainly more angled towards the bull side you can see that they're actually squeezing up once again and this is the this is the benefit of looking at cmes you know looking at spot is is a little bit of a more of a difficult read it would, you know a lot of people would probably get bearish looking at this calling it like a tweezer top or some shit uh, it's not when you look at cmes it gets revealed that this is actually a massive buy up after a gap fill and bringing it down below hand be, or b beforehand which suggests that all of the you know what was happening here is we were wiping out a shit ton of longs and then just be, buys it back up by the by whoever is operating the market right now and what does that essentially tell you well they're well, they're on the buy side once again so uh powerful reaction there and i really really do like it so uh i could also use this price point as kind of an inflection point as well as long as bitcoin does not take out the wick low of this i'm i'm i don't really have a reason to be bearish or close below like 96 we'll call it um and on cme so it'd be about 97 so there's two ways of doing it i think that both ways are probably gonna probably gonna be completely fine with it and, uh, and that essentially marks off my bullish bias right there. Uh, what else do we want to look at while we're here? I haven't looked at the Trollinger bands in a, in a while. I'm curious what they're showing right now on uh, daily. Um, not really telling us too much. Nice constructive rally to the upside. I'm curious if it looks any different on CMEs. CMEs are going to have a chance to close above the top side of the uh, of, 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 of the top trolling demand here. It is currently at about um, 10,150. So it actually perhaps does have a chance today. So keep your eyes on that. If Bitcoin closes above 10,150 today, I actually would look for a test uh, into the you know into the next liquid zone to the upside. Um, so let's actually go mark that off where that is right now. While I don't think that Bitcoin gets this move, uh, I do think that it's important to talk about you know points of failures and essentially the next the next sort of destination. So if Bitcoin does take out the current high, essentially uh, anywhere above, well, lining up with the charts right here, I do think that it's maybe a little more appropriate at 10.2. So I'm actually going to collapse this box down. I think I was wrong about 10,250. It's really 10,2 even. And if Bitcoin can get a four-hour total close above 10,200, I would look for extension towards the 10,550-ish uh, region right here. Um, and I would look for another short-term pullback from that region. So, you know, do we have another uh, perspective targeted region to the upside? Yes. I don't think it gets up there today. I think that we're more likely to play in a range between this region. But if it if it were to overtake this region, then yes, I'd look for extension another mm, 400, 500 bucks higher actually so very very tradable move again i mean we're talking about you know five six percent moves which are well uh, 
you can certainly make a living trading those. I mean, Jesus Christ, man, it's like you get you get you get like a five or six percent move in the in the traditional stock market. It's like what? The, like this is an anomaly. This barely ever happens on it on a day by day basis. Jesus Christ, man, maybe on like a couple month basis, perhaps, but certainly not on a day by day basis. And that's just the beauty of Bitcoin here, giving you all sorts of uh, trading opportunities for the actual traders out there, not for the Moon Boys or Doom Boys though, because they're just holding on to positions that they've been holding on to since they fucking I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Anyways, um, what else we want to talk about? Yeah, I suppose this is also a good time to go back uh, to CMEs and discuss that uh, the inverted head and shoulders on CMEs is operating in the same way that I kind of look for it to operate. Still has a, has a prospective target all the way up to, to about 12,000 bucks. That is where the last major gap in CMEs are and there is no other gap be before the next fucking people ask me. But Crown, is there a gap at 8,500? But Crown, is there a gap at 75? There's not a fucking gap at goddamn all these prices for fuck's sake. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Um... When you're looking at gaps, you want to see wick to wick. You don't, it's like, geez, like people are going down to a fucking five minute and saying, we have a gap. It's like, okay, um, good luck trading like that. Very good luck trading like that. I do wish, I, I do truly wish the best for you, but uh, it's been a pain, it, it was a painful lesson for me to learn in the past. So I'm happy to pass it on for anyone who's, uh, who's listening. Um, but yeah, you know, this inverted head and shoulders operating pretty damn well here. And uh, with increasing volume to the upside on the right hand uh, side over here, I would say that this is the reaction that you'd be expecting to see. Um, and technically that does have a, have a measure move all the way up towards 12,000. So could it be that in the next, uh, you know, that next major move that we are looking for, uh, you know, sometime around the end of this week, starting next, uh, perhaps start of next week, we do see that that start to, that move start to transpire with particular interest on both the eleven thousand dollar region and then eleven eleven five to twelve thousand right here. I think so, yes, and that's essentially what I'm looking for over the next uh, week week to a week and a half. Um, terrible thing to say on video because <laughs> if things do go wrong that's going to be certainly held against me but um that is what things are lining up kind of putting all the puzzle pieces together here again assuming that the current range holds that is where i'm uh, where i'm looking towards um anyways uh, what else do we want to what else do we want to look at while we're here um let's go we, have, we don't have anything new to talk about on uh, traditional markets we do oh yeah, let's actually talk about gold for a second um i think so I, I, I did say that I was looking for a move back up to about 1580, 1585 on gold. I do still think that we're going to get that here. Um, it does look like it's kind of consolidated at a high level, kind of flagging out in a very awkward way. Uh, but more importantly, the daily is not all that pretty. The weekly is fine, though. I don't really have any major issues with the weekly um, as long as essentially it's above 1535 region. Um, and I do think that is probably going to float its way up here, spend a little bit more consol time consolidating this region. And then maybe maybe like uh, at the end of the month, we do get a direction chosen on this one. I'd still kind of lean to the upside on this one, but um, I'm not as confident on it. I'm not I'm not very confident on it. And I do want to be very open and forthright when I'm not feeling very confident. Let's go check out uh, some Forex pairs. Uh, we got or sorry, dollar yen, um, dollar yen kind of keeping it high here. I don't have a strong opinion on this one either. The weekly is fine. I, I don't have a strong opinion on the lower time frames. The weekly I do though, and the weekly I would say probably pops its way upwards and onwards, and it's going to likely crawl this this uh, this rising channel to the upside, um, you know, in the coming weeks. So I would probably be looking for a move up here towards 110 and a half over you know over the coming weeks. But short term, I don't have a strong opinion on at all. Uh, pound yen, um, opposite side essentially. Uh, I, it's right down on the same level of support right here. It probably does have an initial bounce off of it, but I do think that longer term, the damage has been done and too many rejections on the um, on the weekly 200 simple likely does lead to lower prices. I'd imagine as uh, this th that last one was pretty damn emphatic, and I do think that it's getting ready to push off probably down towards 139 and a half to 138 and a half region uh, longer term. This does not look all that hot, and all momentum also is are bearish here alongside major hidden bearish divergence being printed on this last high right, right on over here. I do think that this one probably going to probably going to break to the downside. But again, I don't I don't feel too um, uh, I don't I don't feel too strongly about these um, euro dollar. I do feel strongly about this one. Absolute garbage piece of shit. Probably does bounce a little bit here as we spoke about. We did hit our downside target first, but I do think that uh, after the bounce probably gets faded and going to head down towards lower levels down around uh, one 108 and a half. What, what is this level down here? 
yeah, a little bit below 108 and a half, probably long term. This is just an absolute terrible goddamn piece of shit coin right here. And uh, do you think that it has lower to go longer term, shorter term? No, it probably bounces a little bit. Um, yeah, monthly is atrocious. Monthly is just a just an eyesore. It is AIDS on a chart and absolutely disgusting. Uh, what else do we want to look at? Um, I guess we can look at a few check coins today because why not? There is not any uh, not any traditional market stuff going on. Actually, I want to check in on Tesla. I called a top on Tesla, I think, Tuesday of last week, Tuesday or Wednesday of last week. Let's see if I'd still stick with that. Um, yeah, it, you know, does it bounce back up to like 820, 850? Maybe, but uh, I do think that the top is in. Um, okay, so let's go check out Litecoin. How's Litecoin doing? Litecoin, oh, nasty, actually. Do we have bearish evidence here? Um, technically, no. Litecoin does look a lot more toppy than Bitcoin, though. I will say that. But uh, looking at the weekly right here, weekly closed uh, on not just one new high, but two new highs. I really, really like that. Probably does come back down to test around uh, 72 bucks. But I do think that that test will be bought back on up and you will see it, uh, you know, just float its way onwards and upwards, assuming that Bitcoin does the same thing as well. Bitcoin, a little bit more of an easier chart to read here. Uh, Mr. Buterall, what are we seeing here? Same thing. Probably does come back down, test maybe around like 210 region. But I would be looking for things to be bought up there. And assuming that Bitcoin takes another leg up, I'd probably look for this one to take another leg up as well. In fact, looking at this longer term, actually, this is this is this is really key longer term. I'm going to put in a lot of alerts right now because this is this is huge right here. Look at the weekly RSI. You see how it you see how over the long term you see it's kind of trying to in in the same way that you look at a chart. It's almost got these rounded off bottoms that do suggest uh, you know like long term accumulation. If it can get back above this read on weekly RSI, that would be that would look really really good for an actual breakout back up into this region. And that's probably about the time that you see the macro cycle take over and you see prices back up in this area right here as well. So that's way, 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 way far away. But I do think that it, you know, now that now that we kind of have that in place, uh, it's worth, you know, it's, it's worth watching. And same thing on Mrs. Litecoin, although a little bit more pronounced. I'm not sure how useful that one's going to be. Maybe we can find a similar thing on Bitcoin, perhaps. Um, actually, yes, but same problem as uh, same problem as Litecoin. Uh, Mr. Buterall is actually the most obvious one there. So uh, what I would expect, though, is that uh, next time Bitcoin uh, pops back up into that region on, on weekly RSI, essentially above that $12,000 region right here, which is the last major highs that Bitcoin's put in on a weekly ever since, since uh, literally February 2018. Um, you know, that's at the point when you can start talking about 16000 and, and 20000 again. Very, very likely Bitcoin would head back down there or sorry, head back up there. Um, um, but for right now, you know, that is, of course, not only the area where CMEs have their inverted head and shoulders mesh move, but also that that uh, that major gap. And if we do throw on a Fibonacci, as we showed yesterday, there's some there. One of the major fibs is coming in there um, alongside the volume profile, which also agrees that uh, this area right here. This, uh, anywhere above this area right here is a major macro change of behavior. You do see that after this region, volume profile completely tapers off. There's absolutely no business being done in this region right here. And uh, while Bitcoin feels extremely volatile in this area right here, uh, this is like several degrees different than what we're seeing over here. So very, very likely you'd see just an absolute face melt um, above that region. And that's perhaps what we could be at looking at longer term. But uh, 12,000 bucks, 11, 11, five to 12,000 going to be absolutely critical for that. And we're nowhere near it right now. But uh, I do think that Bitcoin's going to have a chance to test it. So perhaps that trend, perhaps that, you know, evolved into it longer term. Yes. But for right now, that idea is a little bit too far uh, away. Anyways, um, I think I'm coming to the end of the video already. Jesus Christ, man, this this actually was a short order one um let's actually look at the volume profile on these lower time frames uh yeah looks to, looks to me like bitcoin probably does come back down and test around 9800 90 uh yeah about 9800 on the lower time frames probably does bounce there again as well um but uh as far as just wrapping this bitch up you know i just think that we're going to be playing between about 10 2 and uh 9 7 5 region and as long as bitcoin's doing that it's more or less constructed more or less fine and will allow all these lower time frames to cool off and then i'll probably look for a move a little bit later this week most likely um with some opportunities uh, you know in between now of course bitcoin does break this area uh to the downside 97.50 i would look for a move down another couple hundred bucks towards uh 95 50 ish region that's the macro area that's where things could actually really change towards a major uh, bearish bias. Um, if that were to happen, I don't think that that's what happens, but always have to talk about the other side just in case. And of course, uh, 10 2 to the upside. If Bitcoin does break that to the upside, I would look for a move towards t about 10 6, so another $400 move. Uh, very, very nice. And then probably short term pullback from that region as things cool off once again. But uh, that's essentially all I'm looking at right now. Um, we're just seeing a lot of things evolve that we've talked about over the last, you know, over the last like few months. Um, so, you know, the, you know, the, all the preparation in advance was, was all there.
there. It's now it's just now it's just watching it play out. So this probably sounds like a lot of uh, hindsight analysis, and it definitely does if you know if you're if you're new to this channel. But uh, but I want to you know constantly be reminding uh, the people who have been here for a while. You know these sorts of things they take their time, but yet, you know if you do wait for them, uh, well you can get amazing uh, you know amazing moves like this. Anyways, um, I think with all of that said, I'd like to wish you the best of the best once again. Wish you a nice, happy, healthy start to your uh, Monday morning of this new week. Doesn't mean much though, because time is a fucking ar arbitrary concept, so who cares? <laughs> but I will very likely be back on Twitch a little bit later today. I need to eat some beef, need to do a little bit of working out, and uh, then perhaps it's time to start up the Purple Pleasure once again. Anyways, uh, with all that said, take care, and uh, until next time.